What's up, everybody? Nerd Dev Report. Brian, the Rebel Moon trailer came out, Brian. Yeah. All I saw is like, instead of two ships, I saw 12 <laughs> ships on the screen, you know? More fighting. Now we're gonna see some, uh, some sort of training montage. We will show you how to fight. I'm interested in seeing what this will be, but nothing new that excited me, Brian. This trailer came out and he's talking about how dope his director's cut of the first movie. Oh. What the hell are we doing here, Harry? If we can start with the trailer, if you want a couple of things there. So Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon part two, the scar giver, as we noted in our review and assessment of part one, a lot of lifts from other sci-fi and superhero movies in part one. I think we can already see a couple in part two. Uh, so it looks like uh, Sophia Boutella is going to be, you know, going sort of Ellen Ripley style, shaving her head um, as part of her I don't know, final, final showdown. We've got C-3PO's Revenge with Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> if C-3PO and the Terminator had a baby, that, that would be Anthony <laughs> Hopkins' character in this movie, it looks like. Yes, you have you have Jaiman Hansu as if he was the trainer in Gladiator instead of yes. one of the Gladiators. Yes, Doctor. Uh, <laughs> so, I think we're going to have a lot of homage uh, and a lot of recognizable things in, in this movie. You know, as always, there's always Yet a couple, of, you know, there's always a couple of shots and slow mos and angles where you're like, oh, that, you know, that's that's Zack Snyder doing Zack Snyder things. And then it, there's kind of that excess, right? You just sort of see there's so much going on. There's so much visually. There's so much in the lighting. And and I, I just think, look, we've seen part one. So we kind of know the spirit of part two. I would just expect part two to be heavier on the action. Part one, I mean, it's got to be lighter on the exposition, right? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Part one was so <laughs> slow at points. So part two, the trailer would suggest part two moves faster. It better yeah. move faster. It has to move faster. But, okay. So where do you want to start? So Zach, to, is, you know, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. A lot of people, a lot of people would have heard, heard that. Where do you want to start? Because he kind of delivered a one-two punch of, he said what? <laughs> in, that, in that show so do you want to start with his response to the rebel moon hate or yes. do you want to start with Zack snyder teaches us math about box office hate the hate first okay i didn't know about the box office part, but so the quote, hate. he says i don't really have a rebuttal to the reviews for whatever reason the reaction to my movies is very polarizing and it always has been this movie it doesn't seem like there's that much in it that would warrant such visceral responses end quote really like, how is he what surprised is polarizing? at the reaction? What is polarizing? To me, polarizing is like 50 people, you know, half and half. Yes. That's math to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Polarizing is not 20% versus the 80 and, you know, that, that, that don't like it. So I don't know what you're talking about. I agree. Man of Steel, polarizing. That's 56% yes. Yes. fresh. Yes. That's yes. polarizing. Yes. Yes. This movie is his lowest regarded movie on Rotten Tomatoes. The audience score is not that high. It's in the 70s, which is pretty low for an audience score. Like, so that's, you know, that's not a movie that people, people love. But then he doubles down with this thing that I can't get my head around. Talking about the R-rated director's cut of Rebel, <laughs> of Rebel Moon has quote all the gar gore and the hard artness and the nudity and the violence and the crazy bleep they're insane it'll be interesting to see what critics say about the director's cuts because that's a different kettle of fish end quote who was stopping you from making that netflix like netflix let you do whatever you wanted why is there a director's cut you had control. We talk about director versus studio yeah, control. We, oh. You had control. The cut yeah. we see should by definition be Zack Yours. Snyder's cut. Yeah. So why are you already making the excuse that oh 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 this is the this is the pared down, slim down version the studio made me put out and the one I really wanted to put out is the one everyone will like. Come on. But who I mean like who cares about the nudity? Who cares about the gore? He may be trying to channel a little bit of the Justice League thing, but in that situation, he was t he was off the move, and someone else finished it, and so there, fine, your cut, which is legitimately better than the theatrical one, is your version of the movie versus what someone else did. That's not what we're talking about here. People are hating on your work here, and you're saying, but my complete work 
is light years different than what you've seen when I still don't understand who was saying no to him at Netflix on this. It's like, yo, me handing in a paper and I got an F on it and I'm like, well, hold on. <laughs> I got some pages in the trash can. <laughs> Come on, you what? You're wasting my time, man. Which is, look, so that's the thing. You're <laughs> insulting our intelligence. We know what's really going on with you teasing a director's cut on a streamer. It's all about getting people to just click again. That's all it is. Yeah. It's not that the one movie's bad or the one movie's good. Netflix just wants people to click three, four, five times. That's why they let you make multiple cuts. But nobody was in the room being like, no, nah, Zach, it's got, it's got to be PG-13. Oh, we're going to twist your arm here. We're going to cut this movie here. Like, nobody was doing that. Yeah, I didn't even think about the math of polarization being his, his math is when 20% when are in my corner. <laughs> Maybe that's like remnants of like 300, right? Where he's like, what is your profession? I brought more soldiers than you did. And even though they're outnumbered four to one, he still it's even odds. But, but then he starts talking about the success of part one. So this is where I said Zack Snyder teaches us math. He said, because the first film has 80 to 90 million views, if you equated each view to a ticket sold at the box office, that would mean more box office than Barbie, which was the highest box office grocer in 2023. What? So Zack Snyder is telling, trying to tell you that in his, on his abacus, Rebel Moon was the most prolific and successful movie of any kind in the world last year. Like Scorsese and the, 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 the geniuses, as you you, you, you called them. They're probably sitting around and be like, yo, what's wrong with this dude, yo? Brian, it's hard, Brian, it's hard. I understand where Zach is coming from, but not so much in that you're telling us that we don't know what the hell we're talking about. And that's going towards a delusional stage. And that's the thing. So to me, the common denominator between both of these comments is he's doubling down on all things Zack Snyder. That's if I had a problem with how he operates as a filmmaker, it's that he seems to always take criticism and feedback as a reason to lean into exactly what he's already doing. And like where I come from, nobody's nobody's beyond reproach nobody's above learning yeah and like it it bothers me because zach is talented like if he was a total hack okay but he's not like yeah. his filmography has scenes has entire movies where there's real potential so what frustrates me is now he seems to have almost become a caricature of himself to yeah. where like when he gets this feedback he's like no my movie crushed it no yeah. My movie is loved by the by the real fan. Like, instead of looking at it as like, how can I continue to push the boundaries of being a better filmmaker? Which is, to my mind, what the geniuses do. That's why Nolan and Villeneuve and those guys are what they are. Because every time you see something they produce, they are testing their limits as a filmmaker to give you something different at the theater. Yeah. And this guy is stubbornly unwilling to do that <laughs> despite having ability yeah yeah i love 300 i love watchmen and even like, like those... i said like in man of steel in bbs there are moments where you're like this guy yeah. has it visually but he in, has in it 300 Brian and watchmen were those movies derives very close to the source material yeah i mean he's a frank miller I don't know what he's a Frank Miller super fan, Frank, right? Yeah, so he yeah, clearly yeah. like he clearly does march to the beat of that particular drum. So when he marches outside of that drum, yes, is where we have a problem. Other than his little Army of the Dead um, franchise, other than that 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 one little sort of thing that kind of made his name, that yeah, he basically is unable through his original screenwriting to deliver some, which is deliver something epic, which is why we said like, in some ways he seems better fated to be a cinematographer than a director yeah. or a screenwriter. Give him He-Man, <laughs> give him He-Man. 
That would be dope to see. Give him He-Man. Although, uh, if he did that, way. if he did that, what's the over-under on how many times he would use the line? Eight? The, uh, let this be our final yeah. battle? Yo, they used it, like, two more times in the new He-Man. Journey. It's like, really, yo? You had to go back to that, yo? Like, who like, made it famous, yo? I know it was, it was, that was probably the only good thing in that movie. I was just trying to say, like, they don't realize that movie's bad, right? They do realize yeah, that, that movie like, was not good. You still to be quoting anything from that movie. Brian, anything else? Zack Snyder got some competition in math class this week from another director. So Patty Jenkins went on the Talking oh, Pictures snap. podcast. <laughs> And we talked about, you know, she meant she dropped that she was working on Rogue Squadron again, but there was a lot of Wonder Woman discussion. I don't know where to start with this. I'll start with the box office. Let's start with Wonder Woman 84, then we'll talk about Wonder Woman 3. Wonder Woman 84, quote, I could feel the heat on my back and I thought, oh, they're gonna be gunning for us soon. What goes up must go down. So I went into making Wonder Woman 4 going, they're gonna kick the bleep out of us one way or another. And the sad thing was, I think we would have made a kajillion trillion dollars if it hadn't come out in the middle of the pandemic. I want a kajillion bajillion dollars. <laughs> what, what, what are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts are it's really actually similar to what we just talked about with Zach and the Rebel Moon hate. Here's why I, this, I really have a problem with this comment. This to me is like a revisionist history comment of a movie that wasn't received well. Because now yeah. she's saying after the fact, well, nobody was going to like it no matter what we made. Hold up. No. Hold nobody up. Nobody was thinking about that. No. We were looking forward to seeing this. Are you kidding me? This was and like the best thing you did. Yeah. So she telling me, yo, so she telling me, you telling me you gave up on it before you even started. That's what you're, you're saying that this was, this movie was defeated before I shot a single frame and that was my mindset. mindset. There is no way that that's true. You made $800 million with the first movie. It was unilaterally acclaimed. Yeah. Who yeah, went I, into, when they announced Wonder Woman 84, there was, during the pandemic, they were going to screen it on Christmas Day. Was there anyone out there who was like, nah, I already know this movie stinks? Yeah, no, way. no way. Everyone was stoked to see that. Everyone. To the point where we it. gave it a halfway decent review, and in retrospect, we're like, what were we thinking? But it's because we hadn't seen, we hadn't seen a blockbuster on screen in a long time. So we were really excited to see this. It wasn't a good movie. That's why people didn't like it. It wasn't a preordained hate. And she's saying the reason people thought that is because she was so successful with the first one that automatically the second one was doomed to fail. Like, since when? How many franchises and series can we point to where the second one has been received better than the first? So James Cameron went into Terminator 2 thinking that it was going to be whack? Empire Strikes Back, Dark Knight? What? Captain America Winter Soldier, John Wick Chapter 2? Oh. What the hell are we doing here, Harry? Why do we do movies to make dope movies? Yeah. And if it's a, a continuation, we try to make that better. We just don't do stuff just to do it. If you're doing it, you're just wasting time and money. The movie's not good. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, the first one is first one's good. The second one's not. Like, the second one was horrible, man. When you think it, about it, ages oh, really to fly, poorly. To fly, oh, you gotta what? It ages really poorly. Kristen Wiig is miscast. Like, Pedro Pascal, it just doesn't work. Like, it, the movie doesn't work. And if you go back and watch it now, you're just like, wow, <laughs> it really doesn't work. But, like, yeah. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. It's the same as Zach with the hate, right? It's the same as Zach with yeah, the hate. Yeah, it's like it's delusion. Like, you don't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, don't but, get it. You do, but Brian, okay, okay. You're in a, you're in a room and with, with Patty Jenkins and she tells you that. What do you say to that? You can't have a conversation because the second thing out of her mouth was, yeah, the movie was doomed to fail, but it would have made a kajillion dollars if it had gone to... You can't have a conversation uh, with someone right. like... It's like Denzel at the end of training day. Where he's, all, he's, you know, he's like, I'm winning. I'm still winning. I'm st like, if you think you win no matter what the outcome, like, I can't help you. You either accept the defeat and learn from the loss. Or why, yeah, and or why continue? Or why continue to, to beat the, the beat that drum hoping that you get a different sound? And then you, again no ownership and no accountability like sam raimi directs spider-man one two that's awesome 
he's very open about what happened with Spider-Man 3. You don't hear Sam Raimi being like, well, there was no way that was movie was going to work. Yeah, he talks yeah. about mistakes. He's like, okay, yeah. we made these mistakes in putting that yeah. movie together. Like, that's that's what good directors do. Like, Yeah, that's a conversation. That's a, you know, listening to the reasons that possible reasons, not saying that this movie was doomed no matter what. So then they ask her about Wonder Woman 3. And obviously she says, she confirms what we already know. Quote, talking about James Gunn and Peter Saffron. No, they're not interested in doing any Wonder Woman films for the time being. And then, so they, the, the, the host asked her, are you done making Wonder Woman movies for DC? <laughs> her quote, yeah, for the time being, or easily forever, easily forever, yeah, yeah end quote. Yeah, that feeling's mutual. Yeah. Like, let, me, let me tell you, that's, 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 that's not you walking away, that's mutual. And it'll yeah. be a minute, it'll be a minute. We're gonna focus on Supergirl, it'll be a minute before we see uh, Diana again, I think. Yeah, and, and, and that's fine, and that's fine. All right, that's fine. Because I'd rather see some thought going into things instead of just doing. <clears throat> so that means, I'm, I'm, but I want to, I want to circle this. I want to put this on the bulletin board because okay. Patty's going to go make Rogue Squadron. Let's, let's see. So if Rogue Squadron comes out, and Rogue Squadron is critically acclaimed and makes a lot of money, does that mean Rogue Squadron Two is doomed to fail? <laughs> I'm just going to put that back up and see if she yeah. says the same. I mean, that's kind of what she's saying, right? So. Anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of how these directors just think that whatever it is that they put up for us to see is dope. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on! Yeah!